then I'll be able to actually podcast effectively. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Tea Break Podcast, episode 11. Part of youtube.com forward slash sofa of Adam where you can go to find the highest quality content that we are capable of making on VR, flat games, and basically anything that we can get our hands on, but mainly VR. VR is an experience. VR. And so far there's been about three yeah. VR experiences that have come out that goes, wow, this was worth the the money. price tag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but before we get too carried away, welcome. I'm your host, as always, Adam, and across the microphone from me is the batologist that is Mike. I'd go for... Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, fine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm also here. <laughs> yes, so uh, also, if anyone's listening, which I hope you are, go to the Sofa of Adam or find me on Twitter at Sofa of Adam, where I post updates and jiggery poker around my life and my... I've got a picture of this. You can't see on the... Your um, foil my, ball. My foil ball. I never took you for internet trends. No, I just saw it on... Because uh, it's the japanese thing, isn't it? I haven't shown you the video. It? Yeah, they've got little hammers, and they're hammering in their tinfoil balls, and now I'm doing it. And it's very therapeutic, actually. It's very good for anxiety and things. It helps me to zen and uh, calm. Something to concentrate on. It's something to concentrate on, but yeah, you should, everyone should go and look that up on the internet, put in Tim Four Ball, I'm pretty sure you'll find it. But anyway, without further delay, we're going to move on to the first segment, because there's been a bit of a switch around since the last podcast. We've done, we're on podcast 11 now, Yeah. so uh, we've moved things around a bit, because we think we're nailing down. We're nailing down how we want the podcast to run out. So to start with, we have... Blog-lastic. That noise. The, blog. the thing with the blogs. Uh, where we check out the PlayStation blog to see what's new so you don't have to. Yeah. You see how it rhymed and everything. So we're going to go through the PlayStation blog on the VR section. For those of you listening who are very, very interested in VR. Which you should all, you should all be because VR is so good. So to start with, we're going to read them out one by one. And it's how the star of critically acclaimed PS VR puzzler platformer Moss was brought to life, and it's uh, a long talk with Polyarch and the animators. The, yeah, and the animators about exactly how they brought Moss to life, and uh, the fact that she reacts to the player, and you can like high five. We, we we this is we still need to get our hands on this one. I want to play it, and I don't want to play it. Part of me is like it's a really good. Um, uh, how do you put it? it? It's 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 like the new Ratchet and Clank, isn't it? It's like Ratchet and Clank VR to me. It's the new mascot. I want, you know, but I don't know oh, if yeah, I don't yeah. know if Quill is my mascot. Basically, you know, it's like some people are all behind Crash Bandicoot, and some people are completely behind Spyro oh, yeah, yeah. and things. I'm I'm the latter. Uh, we'll talk about that later. I'm, I'm Switzerland. I'm the neutral party. I'm I like the them both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheeky, dangerous line to pull. Um, certainly on the internet, that's a very dangerous line to pull. I've been getting quite a beating on the internet, and it's not important. But you people like Moss, and some people are going, I really like this mouse character, I'm, I'm behind that. That's who I want on the shelf. And there's still an open spot on our shelf for the VR thing that really grips me. Though I'm really starting to think that my mascot might be the Pfizer ship from Wipeout, because there's a model of that, and I might have to make that my thing. I really like how that game plays, but that's later mm. as well. That's not really related to the blog, though I'm sure it'll come up. Number two! The PlayStation VR compatible psychological horror Mystery Dead Secret haunts PS4 later this month, and this is to delve into a dead man's bizarre past to prevent your own death from Ooh. April 24th. Uh, I can't say I've heard a huge amount about this. I've Me, not heard we did. We did. Uh, we had a little look at this a few weeks ago. I showed you a video because it's done on the road. I was going to say that's what you said at the time. Is it's more PT like? It's very pretty, and it's about going back in time and uh, trying to work out how you died and prevent your own murder. I think. I remember reading bits about it here and there, but so it's, it's lots of classic horror. I don't think there's anybody else in it. It's like Amnesia or Soma or Resident Evil, maybe. More walkie sim I think it's more walkie sim. The pictures that I've seen, I don't want to call it not pretty, 
because VR really does shine out when you're in it. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. Like Windland's not pretty, but somehow very pretty. So <laughs> I'm not gonna pick on this, but at first glance, I would say it doesn't quite look like it's, it's up to the standards of Wipeout Resident Evil. It doesn't even quite look like Here They Lie. I'm but seeing lots of flat surfaces, but I haven't played it. As far as I'm aware, it's a psychological horror, so I know that you you get to choose how you play, and it should it's you it's things like that. But we don't know a huge amount about that one. But if you're curious and you're into a new horror game, then you should go and check out Dead Secrets. Is it Dead Secrets? I think Dead it's Secrets. D Dead yeah, yeah. Secrets. And it's oh, Dead out, Secret. And it's out. 24th of April. Yes, well done, Mike. I think I already said that, but I don't care. Good on you for doubling up on the on the information. Next up, we have the sci-fi horror... Sh Ooh, Windows Defender, thank you. Uh, sci-fi horror shooter Killing Floor Incursion gets a official release date. The 1st Ooh. of May. 1st of May, fantastic. I'm really pleased to hear about this. Is that this the one where I can, you, you, you're playing it and I can go on my phone and go, Monster, Monster, Monster you know, in the squares in front of you, and then they appear in-game. Yes, I believe this is it. I'm 99.999999999999% sure that this is that game. Though, I'm not seeing any mention of a two-player mode on this page. No, I'm not sure, but it looks like I think that's it. Uh, oh yeah, genetically engineered monsters can be, giant heads, eh, it looks pretty good. I really like the look of this. We talked about this a little while ago, didn't we, on the podcast? Because, as far as we're aware, it has a two-player feature where one player is in VR and the other person has access to the map. And because it's being randomly generated, you can sort of interfere with that process. So you can steer player one away from a monster spawned by game and then the game wouldn't get the points it, and, and you want to steer the player towards a monster that you put down so you're going to be sort of helping your mate and lying to them and it's quite a clever way of trying to basically rack up points to player from the man who builds the world and the man who runs through it and which I've... is quite a good way of doing this i think vr could use more two-player experiences if i'm honest because it's great to actually have somebody involved with what you're playing and I thought Smash Brothers destroyed most friendships. <laughs> yes, yes, it did. Really, this could be interesting if we're being shot. I will wonder how many friends will fall apart from from such a small and simple game. But it's a nice idea. Zombies kind of looks like Dead Space with a different concept. VR Dead Space, but also two-player. Moving on swiftly to the game that Greg Miller is in. Oh, Island of Time. Yes, Island Time. Manifest 99 creator returns with the PlayStation VR arcade survival game Island Time out now, which it is. And I am not, I mean, I've played a little bit, would you believe? And it's okay. It's not my thing because it's a bit, it's a little bit on the simple side. But as far as VR goes, it's a great way to just sit down and zen. I think yeah. it's, um, it reminds me of something that I thought would be on Steam. I bet it is on Steam. I can't say I've looked it up. I'd be surprised if it's not. But it does have Greg in it from Colin and Greg. From uh, Kind of Funny. Kind of Funny Games, who we listen to religiously. And uh, he's in it as the crab, being very, very funny and all these silly jokes that he gets to tell. But again, I, I feel even then I'm like, man, I wish he could have been in a game that he got to help script. Because I feel like it's not as funny as he is. I'm like, he's pretty good, so... It would be better if he was able to really let loose. Mm. You know, it'd be good if Rick and Morty, for instance, yeah. if they went around and got some people who do VR development to be in a Rick and Morty game to, to break the fourth wall that way. See, how weird would that be? If you, know I mean, you're I watching mean, a video with Greg in it and then he walks in and you actually then speak to him as a character that's voice acted or any, you know, any YouTuber or game developer... If anyone who will agree, really, you just want somebody famous. Somebody you know and recognise that you'll never get to meet in real life unless you live in California or yeah. the rest of it, that you can meet in a VR game. Because that would be crazy. Like, get Sigourney Weaver to sit down and talk about her... Uh, sorry, personal touch. But <laughs> I'd love to sit down with Sigourney Weaver in a game and walk through something. They're talking about bringing... Um, uh, Alien Isolation to PSVR. I've heard. I hope so. I would like that because I haven't actually finished it. No. We never finished it because, because it we... got to, we got to the bit in the middle where it, it got, dragged uh, out. Yeah, we got about <laughs> halfway through, and I a part of me lost faith, but I lost faith in it because it was too hard. <laughs> I, I I hate to say like I was beaten 
but I was, but I wasn't beaten because it was like puzzly. It's just I couldn't quite work out where you're supposed to be, and it was like I just keep dying, and, and I can't quite work out what I'm doing wrong. And, and then you get stuck in that loop because yeah. you're not being told what you've done wrong. Especially when you've got the like security sensors that go off. You know, when they see you and then you've got a Xenoverse in that room and you're trying to stealthily try to work your way around. Yeah. The AI in that good game is a little bit too good, I Yeah, think. it was very good. It was very good. But I think that we need more things like that. But, yeah. Rather than these sort of island time games. But, if, albeit me to say, if you're not interested, don't go buy it. Because you might really like it. If you're more of a... If you've got, like, a wife and a kid who don't really play... Or a husband who doesn't really play VR, then you should really show them something like Island Time. It's a good it's way a good, of getting people in without... Yeah, what was that music game that we had? What was that music game that I got I'm, where you could paint? You could almost yeah. do drawing in VR. Yeah. But it was, like, with sound waves, and it wasn't quite for me. But we were having a go at it. I can't quite remember what it was called. I think it might have just been called Music VR or something like that. Something very generic. Came out very early. In that, you could sit on an island, couldn't you? Yeah. And you could sort of interact with and the, the things sun around you. It was like an equaliser, and then the water turned into an equaliser in the evening as the sun yeah. was setting. Yeah, it was very cool. I quite like that for the time that we had it. I feel like things like that are maybe not quite good enough to really convince somebody in. So you might want something like Island Time instead. But oh, I don't know. It doesn't quite feel fantastical enough to me. Certainly when you can't really move around. But anyway, moving on to the next part of the blog. Satirical physics-based VR puzzler Salaryman escapes arrival on... Oh, uh, s sorry. They don't put any... They're not very good at punctuation in the PlayStation blog. They just write things in full sentences. No full stops, nothing. Salaryman escape arrives on 23rd of May. There you go. <laughs> and uh, this looks like basically you're controlling and moving around uh, characters on a sort of, I don't want to say a 2D map, but it's uh, a map from above. So it's all sort of blocks and you're rearranging the blocks to move these characters around. What was that game that was on Vita, Mike? Was it, was it Monochrome? There was a game called Monochrome, which is quite, reminds me of this, where you sort of spin the map and by spinning the map it would change the angles of things then your character could move a bit like an Escher painting you line two bits up and then a character could yeah. walk across this is kind of that concept but you're just moving blocks really without bending without bending space time and any sort of cleverness but I like the idea I think it is just sort of it's like the reverse of what I would call a um, tower defence game reverse tower defence you're controlling the people and rearranging the world rather yeah. than trying to build towers to keep people out of it. But, you know, if you like that sort of thing, again, go and have a look at that. It's all on a desk, which is quite cool. Bits of it are on, like, a table, so I don't know what the story is. I can't say it's really being very open here. It's got six chapters, 78 levels. So your work, salary, your life. Oh, I see, so you have to push them aside physically to get them to the door. So it is, it's a satirical satirical game it's kind of making a point as well as making you a see so you're, you're yeah, interesting we'll see that's a very interesting game but moving swiftly on to something i personally am very interested in wipe out the omega collection free playstation vr update came out and my god was it amazing it, it was. still is it's still amazing it's the only vr game i can honestly say i've gone back to when i haven't been recording which is huge mm. even you liked it yeah Oh, sorry, it's finish you on. Sorry. But, um, <laughs> it's one of my three games that, you know, it's worth, the pr you know, the price tag for the VR. Yeah. What are those three games out of curiosity? Skyrim, Wipeout, and Ultra Wings so far. Oh, you like Ultra Wings more than Resident Evil? That's a surprise. No, again, no, no, to make me actually feel like I'm... It's oh, there. It's, the, it's the sort of, yeah, the immersion factor. Yes, yeah. I'll give you that. If you're talking on pure immersion, I would still put Ultra Wings and this very high up. One and two would be Ultra Wings. Ultra Wings is the only thing where I've taken the headset off and had that anime, oh my god, I'm in the real world, and you go, <laughs> fuck, my brain like really struggled with the jarring motion of remembering I'm not in a plane, and mm. that game doesn't look very pretty, but somehow they've nailed it. It's weird, because it, it's... it's uh, do you think that's something to do with being in a, an object that's flying? Because Wipeout's a hover car, so mm. it kind of bobs around, which maybe gives maybe the movement of you in the car 
or you in the plane. So you're attached to the plane. So if the plane tilts, everything else tilts around you in the plane. Yeah. Do you think maybe that's what does it? Because I haven't... It doesn't work for driving games. I was I didn't get that when I played Drive Club. No, definitely no. Not as much anyway. I, I I'll have to go back if you're listening and you're very curious. I did Drive Club VR on this channel, and way if you go back, back way in back in the day, like a year ago, <laughs> but I did that. So go check those out if you're curious, because those were very impressive when I first tried them. But in comparison to our modern driving games on VR, it's really not. It's really not cutting it. Yeah. Wipeout's so good. I just can't, I just can't express how happy it made me, because I've been playing Wipeout since 95, when I was a wee child in Scotland for some reason, <laughs> I don't know, my, my accents are all over the place sometimes, Yeah. but um, it was just a magical thing, I loved racing, it was really hard, and now I can do it all in VR, and it's just incredible, if you haven't played it, go and get it, because it's just amazing. Mike, your turn, you gush. What's your favourite thing about Wipeout VR? It's this, it, with EA pissing around with the Star Wars license. It's the closest thing I'm going to get to Pod Racer. Oh, VR. I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah. The Zone Mode was a Pod Racer, basically. <laughs> that was really hard racing. The Zone Mode and talking and doing <sighs> everything was a nightmare. That was genuinely difficult. I, when I actually went to edit it, I cut out like huge swathes. And thank you, Todd, who was sat with me during the editing at the time and helped, and went, you could have a cutaway gag there. <laughs> I was like, do you think? I don't know if I can do that. It's like, yeah, you could. What we need is a picture of Ang. <laughs> oh, you're so right. So it's like, <laughs> quick search on the internet, like an hour later. Jesus, that was a hard clip to find. <laughs> that was, I was like, I know the clip I want. That bit where he's talking to Fire Lord Ozai. You'd think it would be easy to get a little clip of it, but it wasn't. <laughs> it was not easy at all. Also, just to add, in Wipeout VR, people have been having brief discussions on that about how they prefer 2048 to the rest of it. And I wanted to give my opinion quickly, because I'm just answering a few comments at once here, basically, mm. on, on the Facebook group so for Vadim official and and on the Twitter there have been people saying like how can you say that Wipeout Fury is the best bit and I'm like it's just the ship it's just the ship I'm talking about because in one of my episodes I go in and I and I'm like this is just that. the best like Wipeout Fury is the best one by far I and know because I was there I know because <laughs> I was there <laughs> but there's it did make me maybe gush a little bit but I do like Fury because the ships behave differently in Fury. So when you get hit, the ship physically like shakes, which is really weird in VR. That was one of the weirdest things because it feels very good anyway. And then you go on to like shoot, ship like launches itself backwards. It's just a different group of effects where one was on PS3, one was on Vita. There are physical changes in just the way the games were designed. So now they're both here at once, I'm really pleased, but I do wish I could take the ships onto the I don't know if I can I'll have to have a dig because I think if you click a wipeout HD track it gives you the wipeout HD ships and the same for 48 so I don't think I can take the Trigon ship from Fury onto the tracks from 48 but if I can I will do we also have to do some online at some point to prove how pointlessly crap we are from what I understand <laughs> it doesn't have an online apparently it's just scoreboards as far as the online is concerned. No, no, there is an online. That was a mistake. It does have an online where you uh. race against other people. That, who was it that said that? Was that? That was Podcast Beyond, I think. Yeah. I think that was Beyond. They were talking about Wipeout, and one of them said, oh, there aren't. There isn't an online. It's all scoreboards. It's all time trials, which I'm, 90, again, 99% sure that's not the case. I'm pretty sure you can race with other people online, because I've seen people talking about it. And I used to do it back in the day. So it seems odd for them to have taken that out. But meh, never mind. Go play Wipeout VR from us to you, isn't it, Mike? Uh, next, we have, starting tomorrow, the PlayStation VR. Well, not tomorrow, because that was a few a week or so ago. But the PlayStation headset is now only €300. Euros. <sighs> that doesn't even mean anything to us. Like, yeah. what's Euros? That doesn't, if it was in dollars, I could tell you what that means. I think... It'd be a, like two. They've dropped it. Either way, I know that they've dropped the price, and the dropping of price is also the bundles. So it's the starter pack. So you've got a game, the camera, 
and the headset. And that's pretty incredible for 300 quid. I can't lie. And even then it's not 300 quid, it's like 250. And uh, from the looks of it, each the um, the big hits, the big hits of VR are uh, being bundled as well. Yeah, they are. I think they're sticking with, uh, you know, Moss, Skyrim, Resident Evil. Resident Evil. And that's a, a good idea if you want to sell headsets. This was what clever. was big. If you buy it, you can get the headset with it. Yeah, you know. superb. Because I, I don't see any other way of selling headsets other than really pushing it. Pushing it into people's hands by saying it comes with a game you already want. Because a lot of people struggle to pick something when they're looking around online, I've noticed. On the Facebook pages and the groups, there's a lot of people going, I just don't know what to play. I have no idea which one's best. And there's so many people asking for help and opinions. And I'm, I, I get a bit like, go play this. And I realise it doesn't work for everybody. Some people just don't want the same experience that you do. Yeah. And it's causing a lot of problems, I think, because PlayStation haven't really been that clear on genres or length or or there's not really a vr standard where you can go like oh this is a an a triple a, a v a vr game no and that means oh it's a nine hour it's a 10 hour 20 hour long experience because moss isn't that long no so you can't really go oh that's worth 50 quid whereas skyrim is worth 60 quid in my bloody opinion 60 pounds is what we paid and it's and it's huge and i'm gonna get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours out of that longer yeah. people go back to their ps3s to play skyrim because they're back still going the pc i will be playing this in vr on my ps4 for a very long time no matter what happens because i've already got it i'm not going to throw it away it's it's going to keep me going for ages and that's worth it so yeah it is it is astonishing how many games they'll sell along with their headsets but yeah and they do we, have to push more of the bigger games with more people who like those sorts of things and now with the price drop it's they've got no excuse now buy yeah one. exactly <laughs> buy it buy it go and do it now if you know somebody who doesn't have vr a you need to show them my channel our channel the channel the sofa of adam i don't know where that name came from <laughs> at the time i thought that name was cool because no one's noticed yet but if you spell it s of a so far s o f a it's s of a so far of adam which is quite clever but that doesn't really come across when you write it down but when you look at the logo it's s of a so far of adam and then there was like playstation life podcast who called it oh no was it was it playstation life i think they did i or, know i think it was, it was rob rob and the um, r2. r2 we are one you are two and yeah. they called us Sofa so, dam. Sofa ofa dam. And we were like, oh, I see, because there's no gaps in it in the Twitter. And then afterwards, he corrected himself, and good on him. That was very funny as well. But yeah, there are lots of misreadings. Yeah, we do have plans for that, which we'll talk about in a later podcast, I expect. We've got the 3D printer up and running, as our Twitter shows. And we have plans for the channel that involve the 3D printer. And I'm very, very, very excited to actually get that up and running. So do share us with all your friends. The more people we have on the channel, the faster these things will come out. Simply because we'll get a boost in confidence. <laughs> Moving swiftly on to the last of two things on the, uh, on the PlayStation blog. Got introducing Torn, which we have talked about, haven't we, Mike? I believe so. I believe we've seen um it was the horror game where you're walking around uh, a big mansion filled with strange oh machines. yes i remember yes with the with the wand yeah the wand tell sonic me sonic screwdriver sonic screwdriver for some reason my doctor who had left <laughs> um yeah you're walking around with a sonic screwdriver fixing puzzles in a mysterious homestead and i kind of looked look at this one but didn't i don't personally like the art style but you and darren in, in that podcast were, we were slightly we keener were, we were yeah we were slightly keener we were slightly we go oh this is it has us intrigued <laughs> it has you intrigued and and that's another one that i think personally if you're really interested in your puzzlers go look that up because it reminds me a lot of the one with the head in the trailer there's a trailer where they've got a bow and arrow and they're firing oh. at apex apex construction oh is yeah that it? i think that's is it. That it or is that something i think it's like apex constructor or something like yes that. something yeah that's the one and that's very 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 similar but with a bow and arrow not a sonic screwdriver because you need something i can get the point poor game developers are sat there going right you have to do a hundred different things with one item and yeah. you're right okay well, they've got hands. Yeah, but they can't use their hands, can they? Oh, yeah. Um, Sonic screwdriver? 
You go, yeah, that could work, that could do anything, you know, or you've got a bow and arrow, so how are we going to do buttons? You could shoot the, the buttons with the bow and arrow, it's like, yep, yeah, that'll do, and off they go. And it's like, you know, games are starting to be built around one mechanic, a bit like, I could argue again, maybe like Windlands. But Windlands has done really well because he doesn't make you sort. It doesn't make you stand there and like open doors with it. It just goes, no, you're in an open land. Go jump. Go See jump. How many times you fall off before? Yeah. <laughs> and the very last one that we have to talk about from the blog, which has me and Mike slightly interested, yeah. is basically the Dungeons and Dragons thing, which is Table of Tales, the RPG gaming adventure that brings tabletop gaming to life in PSVR. I can't wait. We aren't a hundred percent sure whether this is based on specific games or 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 what, but I know that there's more than one game here. The idea is it gives you a big table and it's all kind of blocky and it all pops together in front of you and, and, and you can then play on very difficult to explain actually if i can find a picture i will put it on screen now because it's kind of it looks in a sort of minecrafty way it all comes together in blocks but also because it's a, a board game everything has to be in a grid so then you move your player around it's as if you're playing like a magical with a magical version of dungeon and dragons where the board comes to life in front of you yeah that's what i'm trying to explain but it's very difficult to word there's lots of different characters. It looks like they've got a dwarf and a guy with a sword and someone with a gun, a mage. Priest. That's a mage. Oh, this is a genius to potion. Savvy when it were. Okay, an alchemist then. Alchemist, there you go. It's an alchemist. But would be the healing and, yeah, rogue. Yeah, probably a healer. But so we looks like a basic Dungeons & Dragons game. But we don't but know if it's VR. got its own story. It'd be good if you could make your own and you could play it with mates online and you could just have a board, some dice. Part of me hopes it's got um, some random element. Oh yeah, it. randomly generated. Oh, I imagine the random. I'd get it if it's if we find it. Is it randomly generated? Let's have a look. Uh, go into the panel. You will determine the fate. Tactical turn-based combat. You will roll the dice to determine whether the outcome, the challenges, will find a way to deal with the consequences that you can't. What is the table of which you speak? Lots of sorcery, navigate the perils of Jewel Island. No, it's a fixed storyline then. So yeah. it's a fixed storyline where you're going from A to B, which might mean that it's quite short. But hopefully, if you, it looks like it's something you could add to down the line, because it is just a board in a in a, yeah. an attic. So they could easily add more to it as, as time goes on. So I think we're pretty safe there, to be honest. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. So. But I'm like... Because, yeah, we, I like Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, this is really up my... Up your street, which it, it is, yeah. It, it's pretty magical straight away. I'm really excited for that one because it's something that I'm hoping we can play online with people. Yeah. Rec Room has kind of worn off for me. I want to go back into it. I'm just waiting for them to update it and get the camera working. And when the camera works in Rec Room, we can use the in-game video recorder to record us having the podcast and then we can try and invite people that we like because it's free so then if you want to be in the podcast you can join us and we should be able to record it all there through party chat in mm. our own private room in in virtual reality and i can't think of anything better no because really. that's what we did try to do in the beginning we, we tried to do it but we just couldn't make it work yeah work. it just doesn't function that way no matter how much we try so yeah we'll be doing that soon hopefully but that kind of ties up the blog so now we get to move on to wherever you are have we been where we talk about the vr games and chat on what we've been doing lately and what's been on our radar so mike wherever you are have you been lately? Well, I've dabbled in Wipeout and been enjoying that. And but also I've been just playing Minecraft, trying to build my Sith Temple and getting killed in the process. Oh, fair, fair. No, that's good. I've been watching a lot of you play Minecraft. <laughs> There's been a lot of it, but me and Darren are still recording. One of those went up today and there's a lot of darkness in here. I was really disappointed. <laughs> For some reason, I just can't seem to get the colour balance right when it goes through editing and it comes out the other side. And it's like, this is slightly darker than it went in. <laughs> now, I've been trying to adjust it, but we might just have to come to the agreement with ourselves that when I'm playing with Darren, I'm going to have to tell him and go, wherever you go, take a thousand torches. It's like, if you don't have a torch, you can't go in. <laughs> and that's the rule from now on, so that we can just light the areas around us. Because literally... I can't work out what it is. 
episode by episode I've fiddled with it, and episode by episode it has come out exactly the same. <laughs> so there's that. Well, Here They Lie's been good, I've been playing a lot of that on the channel. That's been fantastic, if not a bit strange. There's been a lot of comments on those ones of how strange it actually is, because it is very weird. I like the way mm. it's split up though, it is very arty. It is very arty, I just wish it was a bit more consistent. Yeah, it doesn't make I much mean, sense. I mean, as you said in the video, there's a lot of, there is loads of good bits in there, it's just mired with the poor bits, you got to get through to get to the good bits. Yeah. I don't know why they've paced it like that either. They've paced it really weird for no good reason. I think it really was made by lots of teams. And then it they feels, just strung it all together. Yeah, I feel like it's a team thing. And they have just gone, you come up with an idea, you come up with an idea, and we'll bundle them all together. Maybe that wasn't how it went, and it was all planned out really thoroughly. But if that was the case, you need to go and look at how you do your planning. <laughs> because if it was planned that way, it's very odd doesn't make much sense because you're no. following the pipes aren't you there's a lot of following pipes and you're going deeper and deeper and you still I'm still following them now and obviously I've completed it in the past so I know roughly how it ends but I don't talk about it because I don't want to do spoilers for the episodes so that's probably What's the best thing the spoilers? well nothing but people are playing it and I don't really want to ruin it for them if you haven't played it you can go see the episode and buy it and catch up and play it for yourself because I think it's worth playing I wouldn't say it's like Resident Evil. I wouldn't spoil Resident Evil outright in if we were talking about it. I think here they lie deserves respect. It is very pretty, and I like the way it's drawn. I like the way it looks. I like the sound design, and oh, it's really so jarring of an experience. And it's got some cheap jump scares in it as well. It's it's a real mishmash of excellent scared. and bad. I can't get scared by jump scares. Well, that's the point. You can't avoid a jump scare. Jump scares just go. I mean, it's I, like amnesia I, is only. I mean, it got us. We were both shitting but ourselves. There was but one, there's just there not. was only one jump scare, and it wasn't really a jump scare in amnesia. No, a lot of that, most of it. The fear I got from that game was what might be in the next room. Yeah. Yeah, you're right as well because it is. It is just. It is just the fear in that game. Mm, difficult, isn't it? Here they lie doesn't really do that. It just the bit I've just done where you have Cubone with you, yeah. the man dog. That bit's really good because it kind of teaches you not to be scared. But if that's the case, I feel like the front bit of the game is misplaced and maybe and the bit you you're should... currently doing with Goldface. Yeah, like I didn't even know you could die from them. The first time I played the whole game, and I think I came across them, but I don't remember being killed. No. Not by them. I remember being hurt here and there, but not not by Goldface, whoever the hell they are. So I have no idea. But that's that's also been something that I've been playing a lot of that's been a lot of fun. But I suppose that's all we've been playing, isn't it? Certainly in VR terms, that's all we've been yeah. playing. What's Darren been up to? We were going to get um, Bloodborne, weren't we? We're still, yes. we're still working on that, because although it's free, I kind of want to get it on disc so that we can just keep it for as long as we like, because otherwise, plus we'll run out, and one day I'll go to record, and it won't be there, and I'll just be God. This is so annoying, so I like <laughs> to get a physical copy if I can anyway, just for the sake of it. I'd recommend just getting a physical copy altogether. <laughs> yeah, but you still have to download it onto the console, so it's the same size whether you've got a disc or not, so it doesn't really make any real difference. Yeah, it's a tricky one these days, really, getting to go physical or digital. It's a, it's, a, it's a fiddly one, but meh, I'm sure we'll work it out eventually. And now, moving swiftly on. Games in development. Yay! We've got a few things to go through now, the trailers and such, games we think should be on your radar. As we also shout out PlayStation Prospect, because that's where we tend to go to get our Video information. Data. Yeah, we go to get our, we check on them fairly often. They're really good at putting together these videos so that we really know what's coming. And uh, the first one is Animal Force, which is basically uh, sort of VR. You just clip things. You, I don't really know how to explain it. You've got a ship. You know the move controller, Mike? Yeah. So you've got the move controller, and it can be a hammer. Or it can be a spaceship, and there's a, when it's a spaceship, you kind of use a sort of hoovering mechanic, and that makes everything stick in a line, and you've got to catch certain things and drop other ones. Okay. It's basically a collection of mini-games, and then you've got a hammer, 
and there's another section where you've got to sort of balance the map and keep certain things off and certain things on. Mm. It's all very brightly coloured and it looks like it was made for children, but it's one that I think maybe some ten-year-olds might enjoy. It doesn't look like our thing, but worth, you know, mm. worth, worth mentioning. Uh, next one is Track Lab, which is a music making machine, as far as I'm concerned. It's, uh, I've seen bits of gameplay on this outside of this particular video. So, you basically use VR to build music. Okay. Okay, but they've done it in a really odd way, so that you're sort of having all these buildings and stuff in front of you, and, and then you sort of scroll up and down on the windows to change, um the tempo and things like that and then you've got a huge screen in front of you and there are like these pulses I okay. want to say and the pulse will go around in a circuit and then by putting things in the way of the pulse it'll hit it and make a noise so you can sort of create a looping beat okay yeah I'm with you I understand it's, it's interesting it's a nice concept it's better it's a better version of the music VR thing we were playing to be honest mm. uh, next we have 2MD versus VR football. I don't know what 2MD means, but it's VR football. And when they say football, they mean American football, I believe. Wimps rugby. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rugby with loads and loads and loads of kit. But <laughs> rugby nonetheless. So if you want to play a bit of American football, you can probably enjoy this more than we will. Uh, it's a bit of an odd look to it. Watch the mannequins yeah, dance. Yeah, the mannequins dance. Because you're not really... I mean, you have hands, but they don't. So I'm not really sure how you get around. You're not going to be able to tackle anyone, but can you tackle in... I'm guessing you can't, sort of. You can. Can you all that's bundle? Why, yeah, that's why they wear half a ton of armour. Oh, I see, I see. Well, fair enough. Okay, well, at least in this one as well, you can sort of draw a big... <laughs> yeah, you can change the colours, you've got a big ball, and you can... Um, a big ball? A big board, a whiteboard, and you can draw on the whiteboard to sort of show uh, where you want people to run and make a plan so the game's easier to do. But I'm not really sure... I mean, it does look like a lot of fun. It just doesn't look like it'll be fun for us. Yeah. That's the problem. Uh, virtual reality football over. Moving on. We've got virtual reality table tennis. Wow. I can be crap at it in VR. Yeah. Who doesn't want a bit of this? this I'm already like, this could be better. I'd play virtual tennis with someone. That's quite a good idea. In its own silly, ridiculous way. Because I tried this in... Um, it's one of those mini-games I think has to be rendered in its own game. Because it doesn't work when you have it as a mini-game in other things. Like Rec Room has a table tennis board. It doesn't work. Because okay. the, the lag isn't good enough. It's not designed for it. There isn't a proper physics engine. It's just part of the world for fun. If you had a game... Like a golf game, really. You'd need an actual VR golf game to enjoy it. Because the physics just aren't good enough on golf games that are mini games yeah in other if you know what i mean like in rec room or or like uh the arcade one where your pub vr pub wherever it was sports bar sports bar nah, that game is all right but also a bit uh, naff for the same reason but yeah. i'd like this i'd like to play table tennis for a laugh if you see what i mean just to see how bad i was online against other people and look what it is table of tales table of tales so this is handy maybe i now Editor me doesn't have to put a video in at the beginning because there's a video here <laughs> and you can see exactly what we're talking about and how my description was spot on at the beginning. It's all built of blocks. You can basically play some sort of game. <laughs> it looks very much like Dungeons and Dragons, but you're here in this wonderful virtual world, which just couldn't be better. It was a real good fit. I think it will be amazing to play. Yeah, so yeah I am looking for. I am looking forward to this one. Yeah, I, I think to see more super. of it. Well, I don't know if we'll get more at E3. I don't know when it's coming out. When you did have a date, I think I bet it, we there did was say. A date, yeah. I think there was a date. So again, ignore us in the future. Previous us was probably right. And nicely moving on, we've also got some clips of Salary Man here, which is where you do see you. You've got to move the blocks around. You can see. <laughs> what, you can see what I was talking about now. Yeah, sort it's of that much mo momentum valley. That was what it was called. Um, um, uh, uh, momentum Valley. Yeah, Monument Valley. Monument Valley, not Momentum. It's Monument Valley. So in this, I think it's the same sort of thing. It's a puzzle game for moving things around. So looks like fun. Oh, Home Sweet Home. Another one that we talked about a little while ago. I think this is another sort of walking horror sim, of which there are a lot. 
and for good reason, I guess. They're they're very immersive and they work very well. Who doesn't like horror yeah. in, in VR? Like it's just one of those things that seems to have really taken off. I can't know. I would like to see if there's an I wouldn't say another Resident Evil, but a game like Resident Evil where it's not a walking sim. Well, yeah, I mean, this looks pretty good. I mean, it looks very Japanese. There's lots of hands coming through the wall. I don't, you know, blood and mist and fog. It could be good, but it's it's one of those ones where you have to kind of test yourself, isn't it? You have to wait until it comes out. Kind of looks more like a PT. Mm, yeah, it does. It does look very Silent Hill PT. It has that kind of... It does look very Japanese, which is a good thing for horror. I always think that's a great thing for horror. Horror yeah. deserves more Japan. <laughs> as all things do all things deserve more Japan moving swiftly on we have Mind Labyrinth the Mind Labyrinth from what I can see this is remember back in the, on the PS1 you had LSD Dream Simulator oh yeah from what I can see of the trailer this is like the PSVR equivalent oh yeah see I thought this was like mist from what I have seen, I had kind of assumed that it's somewhere between Mist back on there and, and now. Because you've got, you do use your move controllers and you can walk and use full locomotion and everything. But I, I'm not 100% sure what it wants. I don't know what the goal is. It looks very pretty. I believe it was all made in the Unreal Engine, which is a great show for just how pretty something can be pushed. I don't want to say it looks realistic, but it does look nice. Mm. Lots of nice puzzle games. Lots of pretty effects and things like that. Different it's locations. Lots of vis yeah, different locations. It's a visual marvel, I believe. I don't think it's trying to be scary. I think it's just trying to be a, a wonderful adventure that you get to go on. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, Dragon Balls. Wow, I want one. Oh, you get to throw it and let it go and be with all the other Dragon Balls floating around. <laughs> so I'm not really sure. Of course, it'll probably get darker and lighter and it will... I have a, I yeah. hopefully have a plot of its own. I hope it'll have a good plot, but it's one that I am slightly interested in. See, VR Dreams. Yeah, so. I know, it's, it does look like it's just... I hope it isn't just a string of things together, but still. Next, we have Opus Rocket of Whispers. I have no idea about this one, other than the fact that it looks kind of cartoony. Yeah, very self-shaded and flat. It's like so uh, flat. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I don't really know what to tell you. I believe it's... Literally, Very vague. that was it. Yeah, we don't know anything about that one, really. Nothing at all. And now we have Tau Seti, Unknown Origin. And uh, this is a nice one. I've seen clips of this one as well. You get a gun. So I don't know if it will be using the aim controller. I assume that it will. I hope it will have move support as well. I don't know how I feel because you know my stance, that my very public stance against shooters. Yeah. But I'm very, like, intrigued. Because it looks interesting, doesn't it? It looks like a sh it's somewhere between Lara Croft Meets and Halo. Yeah, it's Lara Croft meets Halo. Exactly, that is the best analogy. Yeah. It's well, it's actually more Mass Effect meets Halo. Mm, you know, kind of. Sort of RPG-ish, yeah, to I do, don't, and I don't, then shoot everything. I hope <laughs> so. Uh, what I'd like is a Borderlands game in VR. VR Borderlands, which this kind of looks similar to. It looks like he's going to get lots of weapons, lots of upgrading, lots of swapping bits around and killing bug monsters, which just makes me a happier person overall <laughs> as, as, a, as a human being. Next, we have A Story of Distress. And this is a game to be played with the move controllers, and it's a sort of moving game. So you're climbing, lots of climbing walls. So you know like a climbing wall. You move hand to hand to sort of move the wall so it gives you a real feeling of height hmm. and then it gives you like daggers handheld weapons things like that so that you can basically be quite a cool dude i think that you're a, a you've been brought back to life or oh. you're a golem or something yeah it's somewhere between skyrim and and a, a, it's a mini skyrim i would almost say so it looks like a mini Skyrim. It's a full RPG where you get to actually climb and do some cool stuff. I was stuff. gonna say Zelda. VR yeah, suppose, Zelda. Yeah, it kind of is. It kind of is. It's, it is. It looks like Breath of the Wild with got a, a bit VR of thief update. in, but a bit of thief thrown in. Mm, it, yeah, yeah, it does. I like the bow and arrow mechanic. Whenever I see the bow and arrow mechanic, I'm a happy boy because VR bows and arrows and VR go together very, very well. I think that it's perfect. So next. We'll move swiftly on. 
The yeah, Inner friend. friend, yeah, I don't know this one. This is an entirely new trailer on me, and I'm instantly very curious. There's a boy floating in midair, and a forest. I've never seen this trailer before, I think I missed it. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if it's worth running. So I think a boy, you're meant to be asleep, are you? And you're running around a nightmare, or... I think it looks like it's meant to be scary. Can't quite read it. Oh, that looks just like... That room looks like it's come out of Space Odyssey 2001. There is a room like that where they end up at the end. It looks exactly the same. Meh. Hmm. Meh. It still looks pretty good, but... Not for me, I don't think. It looks interesting, but not for me. Oh, dear. Remember, if you have a comment question or suggestion that you're a topic or anything that you want us to talk about do let us know down in the comments below or in a comment on the video of your choice if you want to ask us anything particular then you can find us on twitter i am at sofa of adam mike has one as well have you learned it off by heart yet no no then we can't tell them until you've learned it off by heart i'm not stopping to wait you'll have to find him on my twitter account and you can drag him off of there but moving on to Read a mail. We encourage you to support other YouTube channels as well. So if you've got anything you do want to say, say it to them. Because we're always pushing people to be more open with what they say. Even on the Facebook page, I'm pushing people to just say what they mean. And then people can just be honest. Because I get annoyed with all these silly fights on the internet where people are just going blah, 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 and moaning. I'm like, what you mean is you don't like the game and you do. <laughs> so that's what they meant to say and then go on about their day so we should all make more of an effort to be better to each other in VR and online and we can make the world a slightly better place can't we Mike? yes yeah so moving on to the comments of which there are quite a few so I'm going to refresh the page so it looks like a few have popped up as well as another subscriber so you get to you're lucky that you commented at exactly the right time so the Epic Dude Robot says, wait, it's three different games? Yes. It is. And he's talking about Wipeout VR, which is three different games. It's Wipeout 48, Wipeout Fury, and Wipeout HD. Although, I could argue it's two different games. Because Wipeout Fury was a DLC to HD. It got added in. So, mm, by the by, but it has its own ships and its own tracks, so I would argue it's its own game. In VR, it's more than enough to separate it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, Nihilus Moore. Nihilus Moore? Nihilus Moore. Uh, I think 2048 looks way better in than HD, personally. And I think I was saying earlier, this is one of the comments I was re replying to, is that I just believe that the effects and things are better in Fury than they are in 2048. But I completely agree that the tracks in 2048 are ten times better because you can actually, they're wide enough to drive around and actually really enjoy them. Uh, oh good, yeah. Bu Ryu Cat says, with this tech and the rejuvenated hype for PSVR, why isn't Sony restoring PS Home but on PS4? Or at least something an announcing Home 2.0. And I don't think they will. Because Rec Room exists and other games yeah. exist that are trying to do it. There's no point yeah. Sony trying to do their, a, version. their own version. Because it won't be as good. And they but won't be able to keep up. You'd think, though, when they released it, where it was... Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Sony's own games aren't making that much of a push. But then again, you know, like Santa Monica Studios. Who did help Tan Gentleman make like Here They Lie and things like that. That came out very early. So there's lots of studios that... PlayStation got involved with early. They just didn't pan out lots of them. But we are getting some good games coming. Mm. You know, I mean, like No Man's Sky is a good example. Hopefully soon, I'm hearing that the next update might have VR in that, and that'll be another game that we might be able to get down the line on PlayStation VR that would drag a lot of new people in who, who you know, probably want an experience where they can actually hang out like you would in the home, you know, a, a wide environment where you can go chill. It's not online though, is it? I suppose it is and it isn't. We don't talk about No Man's Sky's online. But, you know, Rec Room exists, things like that exist. I don't think that anyone's going to push for that. Mm. DJ Bullet Speed now, who says, Wow, Skylanders was the first game I played. And looks like there's quite a trend with Spyro being people's first. And when I asked him about that, he went on to, uh, to uh, admit, let's say, that his first experience was not Spyro. 
Skylanders. It was Skylanders. It did make my stomach turn. Yeah. Over a little bit. We should have shunned the non-believer. <laughs> Shun the non-believer. I was a little bit sick in my mouth. But, I, good that he likes Spyro. But yeah. I think when you go back and play the first one again, but for the first time, when it comes out in 95 or later this year, um, you'll be blown away. Yeah, September, I believe. You'll be blown away by how much better that character is. Because he was a cool dude. He was a he cool He was a dude. very cool dude. He and does then, not like that anymore. He, I he, saw the voice actor the other day at a Comic Con just doing the voice, just going, Oh, hey, man, I just, I'm just so awesome. I'm just a dragon. And <laughs> this is a, you really are just the most cool dude, like shades and everything. No, yeah, no, I can't wait for the Reignited trilogy. No, well, yeah, that's all three, isn't it? I just yeah. want to play the first one. Todd wants to play the second one, and your favourite is the third one? No, I've not played the third one. Oh, Todd said to me earlier that your favourite was the third one. I've never played the third one. Ah, Todd lied. I played the just first two. I liked the second one because there was, like, more to it. Yeah. But the first one was good. No, that's fair, that's fair. Next, we have... David Kenny, if you like looking at ships, try holding R2 on the ship select screen, which I have done, and I did know about that, but I haven't done it yet. Well, I haven't done it in the video yet. I've done it myself, but I, I, I would like to do that again, but I quite like photo mode for sort of standing next to the ship, and you yeah. get a lot of detail there, but yeah, it's cool, it's cool. I'll, I'll certainly, in the next time I record that, because people want me to do the online, so I'm going to get in and record myself online i'll probably have a look at the r2 there because you can basically bring the ship up big in the selection menu and look at it mm. a bit differently so yeah then we've got lots of nice comments like mr caprone who says beautiful black box black box gaming systems it's fun video mate nice job looking for the next one uh cool video plus enjoyed who says pseudo antere cosmonautics you've got a weird name uh lots and lots of good questions oh which ones to read oh yeah edgar lingo who asked a very in-depth question that I would like to answer, which is, uh, I've been playing Wipeout VR, and it seems like I'm using my HTC Vive set, which has a higher resolution than PSVR, but why is it it can't render higher resolution than these PSVR games like Skyrim, which is blurry, or Doom, but you can get games like Wipeout, which look and have graphics that are this clear. And I thought it was very interesting because it's all down to the engine that it's made in. You can get things like Resident Evil, which are made to be stunning on a regular television. You've yeah. got all this detail. So when you put it into VR, you have to start turning it down. Whereas things like Wipeout that were made in the past were stunning on PS3. You re-res them for PS4, you stick it in VR and you go, there's room to spare. Which is a good thing, so you can start t t turning it up. Yeah. T -t -t turning it up. Sorry, a bit of a stutter. An excitement stutter. But there's... Uh, that's how it works basically it's it's quite interesting if you if you really want to know more about that you should go and watch steamworks development which is a youtube channel and they are about a year two years ago old now but they aren't talking about psvr either but if you've got a vsvr and you're just interested in vr as a whole you should go and watch steamworks development they talk about how latency works how hard it is and these are rules that apply to any vr headset and it's, it's just genuinely interesting so if you want to know more about how these games get from development stage to your eyes beaming into your skull via your headset that gap can be filled in by steamworks development and you will be and you will all be slightly better off for it i think because everyone should be more in the know more yeah. empowered for you uh, lots of people who have just said subbed, and I've replied to most of them, if not all of them, saying, Yay! Welcome to the channel. Uh, so thank you. Uh, you can look at the ship. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, Tazimo, who says RIP the boat. Which, <laughs> yes, uh, that was in uh, Twerk Dog, the Minecraft episode, where he was uh, sad that I lost my boat. But not to worry, because in episode 10, which I think is up now, I'm in the boat permanently. <laughs> so I'm out stuck at bloody out at sea. <laughs> I love Minecraft, but I'm not so good at it as everybody else is. It's 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 it must be disappointing for people to watch me playing it. <laughs> Going, how bad are you at Minecraft? You're better at Minecraft than I am, really. I'm more of a builder. I like making lots of cool stuff to look at. I'm not really so good at the whole exploring ex element. Yeah, uh, the actual getting materials. I don't like mining. Mining's boring. I want to build a machine to do it. So I'm going to have to get all sorts of redstone out now that I'm learning all of that. So, meh, we'll see. Lots and lots of nice comments on the uh, on the Wipeout videos. Goodness, it's, it's amazing. People asking about the art book, which I can only say you should go and download for free. Because if you've got the game, 
It comes with it. It comes with it. If you go into your downloads, it should have downloaded with it. Like you should have got in your in your downloads a choice of do you want to download the art book or not. If not, go to the PlayStation Store and type in concept art book and it should come up and I assume it will be free. If you've already got the game. That yeah. should be how it works, so it's a bit tricky, you know, it's it's a difficult one. Uh, lots of people again saying how good the videos are. Thank you very much. Oh, Dark Kirby who said uh, yay and that he was playing Zelda the Minish Cap as well later earlier the year, which is a great game. Me and Todd have been enjoying the Minish Cap profusely. It's been so much fun. No, I I did enjoy you. Yeah, enjoyed you playing it Minish makes... Cap so much that I had to go and emulate it. Oh, you've got it as well now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was taking a sip of my tea because I've got a parched tea rodent and throat. But yes, I'm really enjoying Zelda as well, because I've never played a Zelda before in my life. And now I'm going through it and just getting really angry. And Todd is talking me through, so <laughs> that's all good. Uh, Busy Dreaming says, having the casual option is just that. And he's talking about the um, Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft? He's talking about Wipeout, where I also mention my strong opinions on whether or not games should allow for comfort options, which they should. I think you should have all the comfort options in the world. But I think sometimes you should have a casual game and you should have a serious game. Like, I don't think Skyrim should let you have, like, blinkers and things. No. I admit they help, but if but you're it not, ruins you're, with the immersion. You're, it ruins it. You're not getting it anymore. And I feel the same for Wipeout. Like, playing the whole thing on easy with the barriers on. I mean, it's a bit like I was saying in the episode. Play Mario Kart and put all the auto-drive things on. And you'll you, you'll win every time, but you won't be having as much fun. Yeah. You won't be getting the crashes, and that's what it's about. And I feel like VR's the same. Sometimes the immersion is what you're there for. If you're not letting the player get it, that's then you're missing out. So that's all I meant. But the, he has a point, and his point was that we should really let the casual option remain. It's here to stay, which it is. And I can see I can see why people disagree with me. But I just want to get my point across. That's all. I just. <laughs> yeah. uh, some people saying I should try it on Elite Difficulty and I have done I'm pretty sure I did on one of my videos I did wipe out on Elite Difficulty I always do Ooh. oh yeah Battlezone someone mentioned Stephen Summers says uh, if anyone hasn't played Battlezone that is a must which it is I, I didn't like that one. did you not I would be tempted to go back to that and see how it's been updated since you know yeah I would be more curious to see what it's like now but at the time it was very poorly balanced and i was it just wasn't as much fun as maybe it could have been you know uh what else goodness me there are so many comments on the wipeout video it's actually unreal oh we've got a skyrim one here uh from john anon Fanoff, and <laughs> i can't all of their names are so difficult pick proper names John Anofanoff, though that might be his real name, of which case, I'm very sorry. You have a wonderful name. It's beautiful. How dare, <laughs> what a lovely, well-spoken name you have. Well recovered. I, well recovered. I think it's, it's, isn't the modern language beautiful how other countries spell words so very differently <laughs> to how we do? And he says, I'm working my way through these, and they are great. Love your humour and the sharp editing. Uh, found you through Wipeout footage, and must say that I'm finding Wipeout by far can't bring myself to soften the settings and he's absolutely right see he agrees with me and he left that comment on Skyrim which is really odd because I was uh, read it because it says Skyrim but he's talking about Wipeout so well done you you've tricked me you've <laughs> ruined uh, my whole bit on on, on my podcast uh, got a comment on Ultra Wings as well from Ben Tennyson who says that he's really enjoying that in VR and that it's uh, by far the most fun it does make him feel a bit woozy at times but it just comes with the territory and I agree, he's doing well. You've got to stick with it and just ease yourself in. Ease yourself in. Force so, your way through it. Force your way through that, that <laughs> brick wall. But if you've been playing Ultra Wings as your first thing, then well done you. Because that is quite a jump in. Which it really is as well. Like I'm, I'd be amazed. Uh, then we've got lots of more comments on the Here They Lie videos. Lots of nice things. People talk about Ready Player One. Ooh. I'm going to have to get into the habit of getting people to start tagging me soon if we want to um, discuss things with them. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to have to work out a tagging system. Well, if there's anything you want to ask us on this podcast, I suppose it's best to message us 
on the podcast video. Yeah. But otherwise, I'll just read out random things. And now, to go through the subscribers. We probably won't read them all because we've had like a hundred. Ever since we did this, ever since the Wipeout videos, we've just... Yeah, it's uh, been good, it's been good. But I know, you know, there's been lots of very good videos on the channel. I think the Minecraft have also been doing quite well, but that's the editing, I expect. Minecraft and Skyrim get the editing treatment of a god by me. <laughs> they take hours to do because there's echoes and effects and all sorts of things to make it feel like we're even more there than we really are. So thank you very much for to all of you who are listening and commenting and if you've subscribed and been on the Twitter it's been amazing and we are really putting this channel together now so thank you very much share us with your friends so those of you who have already joined us welcome to Morgan Jagner Alastair Landerstad to start us it off Daniel Norman Blair Harris Sudantes Quadromotics, Cosmonautics. I'm going to say that one again. I think he Sudan may be a Russian you'd, um, Kerbal. You Maybe a Russian Kerbal joined the channel, yeah. <laughs> we'll just say Cosmonautics. Daniel Fago, Lanzify, William Ponce. Mm, fine. Brian Lee, Offland to Blasson. Oh dear. The Odd Enderman MC. Yay! Some, okay. Uh, yeah, Minecraft. He's got an Enderman in his picture. That's pretty neat. We've got Michael Callahan, uh, McReady69, Marcus Gray, Zayanoff, Zayanoff, Zayaroff. Zay. It's a funny spelling, but that is Zayaroff, isn't it? J uh, Jose. Is that you say? Jose Mures, uh, John McDonald, Paulio Sacrila, Jennifer Side, Cy Cyrilda. Mm -hmm. That's a weird one. Kura. C R I D R. Strider. Jeffrey Strider. And we'll stick with that. Well done, you, for having another mind boggling name. If I pause on you and get your name wrong, you should be flattered, really. <laughs> That's what this is. You've caught me out. Well done. You've gotten a few extra seconds out of us by having a difficult name to say. Or at least difficult for me, because I'm tired from editing all day. And then I sit down with you and go, let's do a our podcast or however long it takes let's that do won't... some tongue twisters yeah that won't drain <laughs> me at all uh Mienko, nick harris dave glick peter wright ian kreller arthur 78 peter bricks ralph real paul 45 matthew mcintosh knight 666 king 405 geekology oh geekology has been i've been answering a few of their comments i swear i've spoken to them once or twice jeremiah Jer marcus robson Costa Troy, Dale Ryan, Simon Hammond, Sandy Lustig, Sexy the Three Beast, clever name, Solar Meldry, John, oh John Afronov, hey, we'll end it there because you've you've made me a full circle, John Afronov, with your comment, and now we end on you. <laughs> you are the last subscriber we shall read. There are too many of you, but all of you have done me a great favour by subscribing. You've all been part of the channel, and I hope to see you all soon when we're talking. We'll see you in the comments. Meet us over on on the Facebook where we have the official Facebook group Sofa of Adam where we do a lot of posts there We've got the Twitter at Sofa of Adam which is where I post ridiculous things like my metal ball where's my metal ball what have you done with it give it back here give me back my tinfoil ball yay <laughs> I've got my tinfoil ball which I tweaked and uh, things like that I put up uh, pictures and things that make us laugh don't we yes we we're do. good at that so if there's anything you want to add and thank you very much for listening to us or having us on in the background we do our best we do appreciate you spending all your time to spend with us do like subscribe share us with your friends tell all your buddies about us your mum your dad your sister your best mate your dog cousin dog pin a letter to your dog and then <laughs> let them run free for a day cover them <laughs> with flyers <laughs> right on a cloud <laughs> our name get a rocket and try and make a firework that says sofa of adam he's really cool go and subscribe to him and then and then scarp back inside <laughs> and and say that it wasn't you say this guy in england told me no don't say that don't say any of that but <laughs> but you should tell people about us because the more people are here the better and more fun we'll have and then later on we want to start getting people involved don't we to yeah. actually join us on the channel maybe use some online games and VR. So if you've got anything you want to tell us or anything you suggest, let us know. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next episode of the Tea Break Podcast. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. Bye. Bye. And stay virtual.